Oral questions by members? Member for West Vancouver, Capilano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this Premier buried a BDO audit of ATIRA that was already underway when he didn't like the results. It was covered up and it was cancelled. In fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, the Premier ignored the warning signs of financial mismanagement. And he went much further and actually tripled the funding for ATIRA. Uh, it happened on his watch. No other housing provider experienced such a massive increase in funding under this Premier. So why did the Premier choose to triple funding for ATIRA despite numerous red flags warnings, and even clear evidence of financial and organizational mismanagement. Premier. Well, thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker, to the member uh, for the question. Uh, the BDO report uh, that the member refers to uh, was initiated under the previous administration and covered their time in government. Now, I've been accused of a number of things in this House, but covering up mismanagement that took place under the watch of the previous government is not one of them. That's a, that's a new one. Within, uh, within 120 days, Honourable Speaker, of being sworn in as Housing Minister, I directed staff to undertake a review of BC Housing that led to the report that was released today. I spoke to it in the House today. Happy to take questions from members on that issue. Member Supplemental. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to remind the Premier that it was uh, the B.C. Liberals that instigated the BDO audit of ATIRA in 2017, and the Premier and the NDP cancelled it, covered it up, and then tripled ATIRA's funding. So after six years and two terms of this NDP government, housing and homelessness have never been worse, as we all know. Nowhere is it more evident than in this report released today explosive and scandalous mismanagement of BC housing. But at every turn, Mr. Speaker, this Premier has sought to avoid accountability and in fact conceal his disastrous record overseeing BC housing. The report the report highlights that financial reviews again of Atira were stalled after 2020 right when this Premier was the Housing Minister. And during that time, again, tripled the funding of ATIRA. So, Mr. Speaker, when will this Premier acknowledge his direct responsibility and his direct accountability for the mess that happened under his watch at BC Housing? Premier. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The member correctly notes that the BDO report, as I understand it, commissioned by the BC Liberal government into activity that took place under their watch as government. And I understand the member is accusing me of burying that information about what happened while the BC Liberals were in government. Well, when we had the ICBC report uh, about uh, the BC Liberals' time in government, we released it. When we had the money laundering report about the BC Liberals' time in government, we released it. Shh, shh, shh. I, I, Please continue. And, and with respect, uh, as soon as there was an indication when I was Housing Minister that there was an issue, I uh, reached out to my colleague, uh, the then Minister of Finance, to ask the Comptroller General to initiate a forensic investigation of BC Housing. And I shared the member's concern about the, the spike in funding added to during the pandemic. Uh, I do not and did not, as Housing Minister, direct funding to any particular organization. Those were recommendations that came to government from BC Housing. And the issue in this report that we released today is that those recommendations were tainted by the fact that the CEO was interfering in a way that he shouldn't have by circumventing the conflict of interest guidelines. Now, that is a serious issue. I agree with the member about that. And to that end, for the first time in 30 years, this government has released fully the report of the forensic investigator so that this House, on both sides and the public, can see what was happening and so that they know that we're taking action on this. Opposition House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, uh, the Premier continues to pretend that everything is fine, uh, but he actually, he actually buried, he buried the warning signs while tripling funding to Atira. This, this happened while he was the Housing Minister. Let me say that again. He buried these warning signs, this BDO report, and then he, at the same time, he tripled, the Premier tripled, Atira's funding. 
He buried the 2018 uh, uh, BDO audit that showed warning signs of financial mismanagement. Frankly, a, a report that nobody would have known about if it hadn't been leaked by a whistleblower. And under the Premier's time as Housing Minister, and I quote, BC Housing's financial reviews of ATIRA have been substantially delayed. The most recent, uh, recently complete financial review was for 2020, end quote. That's on page seven of the report released today. He also tried to hide the ENY report by quietly posting it on a website over the Canada Day long weekend and then firing the BC Housing Board on a Friday evening, claiming at the time that it had nothing whatsoever to do with quote unquote wrongdoing. Mr. Speaker, why did the Premier triple the funding to ATIRA without any proper oversight? Premier. Thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. Uh, to the member's question, this government has more than tripled the funding for housing uh, that took place when those guys were sitting on this side of the House. And so... Honourable Speaker, we are in a housing members, crisis. Members, 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 members. Premier will continue. Honourable Speaker, thank you. We are in a housing crisis. And I agree with the member. It is concerning that it was particularly ATIRA that saw the spike in funding recommended by BC Housing to this government, which we did fund during the pandemic to respond to encampments, to get people inside, to get services to people during the COVID pandemic. And the concern is that, as the report outlines, that the CEO at BC Housing was taking active steps to circumvent the conflict of interest guidelines and interfere in those decisions at the staffing level of BC Housing. And so I share the members' concern. That's why we released the report, so that the members could all see it, and so that we could ensure accountability for uh, BC Housing, uh, for government as a whole, uh, and to make sure that everybody in the House is on the same page on where we're at. This is the first time in 30 years a report has been released in this manner. We're proud of that. But we do not accept the conduct that took place at BC Housing, and our work is not yet done. We have more work to do with the chair, and we'll do that. Opposition House Leader Supplemental. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, you're darn right you got more work to do, and the Premier's also got some, some explaining to do. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the 2018 video report was buried by this Premier. And at the same time as he buries this report, which was only known, became known to the public because it was leaked by a whistleblower, this Premier, who was the BC Housing Minister at the time, increases Atira's funding by triple, from $17 million to over $74 million in 2022. That's a 335% increase in funding. All the while, there's, uh, he's, he's become known at the, through the BDO report. He was, it was made known to him that there was significant financial mismanagement taking place at Atira. Mr. Speaker, as Housing Minister, the Premier also signed off on nearly $400 million in hotel purchases at nearly double their combined assessed value. But the Ernst & Young report says several of those hotels are suspect purchases, like the Buchan and Columbia hotels, because their purchases didn't have proper oversight. The ENY report singles out Burns Block, a property that the Premier personally celebrated the purchase of, even calling it sweet justice for one of his first files as a lawyer. But the report said this on page 16 about the funding that the Premier personally announced, and I quote, we were unable to identify a rationale for Atira being directly awarded the operating agreement for this property, end quote. Mr. Speaker, while the Premier has been so deeply and personally involved in the purchase and operation agreements of these Atira properties, why should anyone believe that he wasn't aware of the gross mismanagement at BC Happening that was happening right under his nose. Premier. Thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. It was shortly after I was appointed as Minister for Housing that I directed staff to hire an external body to come in and review BC Housing. It was that work that led to the report that has the member uh, asking these important questions here today. Now, I don't uh, pretend to know whether the opposition will understand this. But having stood on the sidewalk, let me finish the sentence. Having stood on the sidewalk. Members, members. 
having stood on the sidewalk while members premier has the floor having stood on the sidewalk out front of the burns block with my clients as they were given two hours to clear out their rooms and be made homeless as the landlord went to home depot to buy plywood and tools to nail up boards over the front door so they couldn't return and then actually sell the building for more money because it was worth more vacant than with people inside it. To see that building come back into public hands and provide housing for women fleeing violence, that is indeed sweet justice. On but it does not and it cannot ever excuse the activity of the CEO of BC members, Housing. Members directly awarding that contract without process. It does not, and it will not, and that's why we commissioned the report, and it's why he's no longer the CEO, Honourable Speaker. Leader of the third party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Today, the government released the Ernst & Young Forensic Investigation into BC Housing. The report found and uncovered, quote, significant risk to public funds, and serious questions about BC Housing's financial oversight capabilities. The report outlines a pattern of disregard for conflict of interest rules. Now the government has announced that they have responded to the report recommendations, including actions that they are taking that, and others that are ongoing. It's clear that government is taking this report seriously. My concern, Honourable Speaker, is the pattern. We've seen over and over again rigorous reviews and findings of crime, misuse of funds and harm to the public interest on everything from professional reliance to real estate to lottery operations to MCFD. Through you, Honourable Speaker, to the Premier, this is a pattern and it undermines the public trust in our institutions. I heard him speak earlier about how he sees though that trust as so important. Will the Premier extend the recommendations of the Ernst and Young report insofar as they improve whistleblower protection, transparency, and conflict of interest rules to other provincial institutions. Premier. Uh, thank you uh, to the member for the question, and it is an important one. Public trust uh, in public institutions is important for them to be able to respond to the challenges we face, everything from the housing crisis to climate change to the toxic drug crisis. Uh, and I thank the member for the important question. Uh, this government has introduced whistleblowing legislation first implemented in core government, now going out to, uh, now out to health authorities across the province, and that work is going to continue. Uh, in response to the recommendations from this report, additional whistleblower protections uh, in place at BC Housing. Uh, and absolutely, we're looking for opportunities to put this in place at other uh, uh, government agencies and institutions uh, through the Crown Agency Secretariat. Um, and I think that really uh, addresses the, the member's question, but there is one piece that I do want to, to add, which is when, when our government sees uh, a problem, when we see an issue, uh, we take action to investigate it and expose it to the public. Mem and, members, members, and members. In the short term, can have a negative impact on the public's perception of Crown corporations or others. But in the long term, it's necessary work to ensure that public confidence and uh, that's why I was proud that the Housing Minister made the determination to release this report in its entirety. Leader of the Third Party Supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Indeed, the Premier does have a habit of initiating program reviews. These reviews tend to result in thorough reports. We tend to hear about wrongdoing and recommendations for government to work on. And, and then we see uh, often in this place, as historically has happened, is one side points at the other and, and then switch sides and on we go. But at this point, Honourable Speaker, we've seen a lot of evidence that there are problems widely. We've seen evidence of wrongdoing and mismanagement at the BC Lottery Corporation, in real estate, in BC housing, MCFD, professional reliance. The effects include mining disasters, missing children, outright crimes. The perception of, of conflict of interest goes all the way to the former Premier's board appointment with a mining corporation with whom his office has significant dealings while he was in executive office. 
Any reasonable person would look at this and see a systemic problem, and one that requires a systemic, all of government solution, and a commitment to transparency. Through you, Honourable Speaker, to the Premier. Does the Premier have a plan for proactively improving transparency, whistleblower protection, and conflict of interest safeguards across all government ministries and agencies? Premier. Uh, thank you to the member for the question. This is an area where uh, certainly our government shares an interest with the uh, third party. Uh, and uh, during our time uh, working together in the minority parliament, uh, brought in significant reforms around uh, lobbyists, for example, to address some of these issues. Uh, we have expanded um, and continued that work through whistleblower uh, legislation uh, to make sure that whistleblowers are protected uh, and integrity and public trust uh, in government is core, certainly, to this government uh, and our administration. And, uh, and I appreciate uh, the member's attention to that important issue to all British Columbians. Member for Kamloops, North Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, earlier today, the Premier said, well, he didn't involve himself on, on the, the sending of money to certain groups like Atira while he was the housing minister. Well, here's the problem with that answer, Mr. Speaker, and I think it shines a light on on the problem we have right now with how this whole process has played out. Newsflash for the Premier, when he was the Housing Minister, it was called Minister Responsible. Someone needs to be responsible for what was going on at BC Housing. <laughs> this Premier simply wasn't, and despite numerous warning signs and a growing body of evidence pointing to severe mismanagement, the Premier has continued to divert resources into a failing housing program while covering up the existence of problems. Under the Premier, the funding for Materia has more than tripled, Mr. Speaker, from 17 million to over 74 million in 2022. In fact, from 2020 to 2022, mainly the time that he was the minister, went from 33 million to 74 million while he was the minister responsible. The ultimate accountability for these taxpayers' dollars is with this Premier. With the overwhelming evidence pointing to financial and organizational mismanagement at Atira, how does the Premier justify his decision to triple funding an organization at the same time that the financial mismanagement report after report after report was being presented to this Premier? Minister of Housing. Thank you so much, Honourable Speaker. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, what, what's clear, I think, here is that when the Premier sees something wrong, he takes action. That's been a consistent theme for this Premier. When it comes to... <laughs> Honourable, Honourable Speaker, when it comes to money laundering... Members... When it comes to money laundering... Members... Enough. When it comes to his work at the Lottery Corporation, when it comes to his work with ICBC, it's a consistent pattern that he's shown that when he sees something wrong, that he's a man of integrity and he takes action, Honourable Speaker. Now, we've talked about this already, and I'm happy to go through it again, but we fundamentally disagree uh, with, um, with the actions taken by the former CEO. I mean, in many cases, the report lays out cases where um, it, the staff were directed to award certain contracts to Atera, suggesting that nobody else would have the capacity without testing the market. We think that's wrong, Honourable Speaker. All the things in this report are just as alarming to us as they are to the members across the way. But that is why it was vitally important, Honourable Speaker. Members. Please continue. Honourable Speaker, that's why we felt, that's why I felt, that it was vitally important for the first time in 30 years to use Section 25 to make sure that this report is available to everyone because our goal is to ensure we shine light on where there's dark places, but also to ensure six that years. we can... The member says six years, Honourable Speaker. Can the member tell me one time in his time, in their time in government, where they didn't sever reports, uh, Honourable Speaker? Shh. Were members. there several reports where they were transparent with anything that they did, Honourable Speaker? Yes. Members, no side comments, please. Honourable Speaker, uh, of course we take this uh, work really seriously. That's why the report was made public. 
Member for Campbell's North Thompson, supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, this Premier's track record is he sets out a narrative and then he takes whatever steps and fixes the rules however he needs to try to get the result he wants. He's just done it with Bill 26 where he's saying the courts don't matter. It doesn't matter what the courts say about our beauties. Well, here's what the, minister, here's what the Premier had to say in 2022 about the Arbutus project, when those same residents came forward and had concerns about BC housing, he said, oh, this is just another excuse to oppose. That's what he said about the residents of Arbutus. When they were saying that there was problems at BC housing and they didn't have confidence in BC housing in the project in their neighborhood. And in fact, the Premier went one step further in the Vancouver Sun article in June 15, 2022. He says, the changes to the board are not related to any sort of wrongdoing, Mr. Speaker. That's what this Premier said as he was admonishing a neighbourhood for having concerns about BC housing in their neighbourhood. Fit the narrative to whatever this Premier needed for that day and time. Mr. Speaker, how can the Premier, in light of this 50-page report, still stand in this House and try to say that the firing of the board had nothing to do with wrongdoing and wrong actions going on at BC housing? Premier. Thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. At the time uh, that I received the first briefing about uh, the first report by ENY, please, I was profoundly uh, concerned about the conduct of the CEO, uh, reached out to the board, and the board was unprepared uh, to put the CEO on leave or to fire the CEO. Uh, in addition to that, I saw some significant heavy lifting ahead for the board. Uh, this was a housing board and we needed a board with experience around organizational transformation. So the member's right, I did remove the board, but it was a difficult decision. It's important to note that there was no wrongdoing on the part of the board. There wasn't. These are people of integrity who are doing their best. We had a disagreement about the best path forward. And it's a difficult decision, but sometimes in government you have to make difficult decisions to replace the board. But I stand by it, there was no wrongdoing on the part of the board. The, the second component is a significant difference between our side of the house and that side of the house. We believe, I believe strongly that there's a housing crisis that we need to take action to house people. And that side of the house will take any opportunity to say that we need to slow down or not take action. They opposed our housing targets before they voted for them. Now I hear, now I hear that they don't want to build that badly needed housing at our Butis, that they would rather wait on that. They're members, opposing members. the idea that people who own a single-family home should be able to divide that home into two or three units. And so continually, members. The, the consistent theme from the other side is to slow down, to not take action, that it's not urgent. I disagree strongly. This report today is around ensuring, as best we can, public confidence that we are, A, taking action to protect tax, tax dollars, and second, members. that we will do what's necessary to address the housing crisis, while that side will take every opportunity to slow walk it. Member for Prince George Wilmont. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. What British Columbians expect of their Premier is for him to stand up today and acknowledge that he was the minister responsible while mismanagement was taking place at BC Housing and he did nothing. What he did was attempt to bury that mismanagement. Why? So he could focus his time on his leadership bid. But, well, the Premier can laugh all Remember. he wants. Let's look at the results of his ignoring those damning reports. I would remind the Premier that at the Winters Hotel, there was a fatal fire that killed two people and displaced hundreds of others. And that BDO report that this Premier wants to dismiss warned the Premier about the dysfunction of ATIRA. And it said this. It led staff to, quote, look for ways to reduce the pressure on cash flow with other downstream consequences, end quote. It should come as no surprise to this Premier that FOI documents revealed that fire extinguishers at the Winters Hotel were empty and had not been replaced by staff. So can the Premier stand up today and explain to British Columbians 
Why, while he was busy trying to bury the mismanagement at BC Housing, his priority was his leadership bid. Minister of Housing. Thank you so much, Honourable Speaker. And uh, certainly the, uh, the uh, fire at Winters Hotel was a tragic event. Um, uh, just an awful thing for anyone to go through. And um, I know that um, uh, many of the survivors are in court right now, so I can't uh, comment too much on that. Uh, other than to say, Honourable Speaker, that um, when the Premier saw something that was inappropriate, he took action. Honourable Speaker, the reason why you have a forensic investigation released under Section 25, the reason why we're having this discussion in the question period is that when the Premier became the Minister responsible for housing, he saw something and he took the steps to ensure that there was public accountability, that, that steps were taken to ensure that anything that was found wrong would be, uh, would be addressed. That's why we're having this discussion, Honourable Speaker. So to suggest otherwise is, is simply, simply wrong. Now, we have said, and we're going to say it again, the report that found mismanagement and around the conflict of interest is simply wrong. We're just as appalled as the members across the way, Honourable Speaker. And uh, that's why this report being made public was important. And the steps, that, the recommendations that have been made, many of them have already been enacted. And, and the ones that remain, all will be done by spring 2024. Prince George Wilmot, supplemental. Well, no one believes that about the Premier. Let's be clear, at every single opportunity that he had, he avoided taking accountability for the mess that, let's be clear, he was responsible for. He buried the BDO report that outlines severe financial and organizational mismanagement at BC Housing and Atira. FOI documents show a massive spike in dysfunction and problems at BC Housing. When? When the current Premier was sitting there as the Minister responsible for housing. Guess what happened? Here's a quote. There was a dramatic increase in staff departures over previous years. End quote. What did the Premier do? Nothing. He downplayed and in fact quietly tried to release that original EY report. When? over the Canada Day long weekend, and then firing the BC Housing's NDP appointed board on a Friday, even without explanation, except to say that there was no wrongdoing. So when will the Premier put accountability as a priority? When will he recognize and acknowledge that this mess at BC Housing happened on his watch? Minister of Housing. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The fact that there is a forensic investigation report made public is because of the Premier. The fact that every time he comes forward and you see something wrong, there's change that happens, Honourable Speaker, when it comes to the money laundering, which, by the way, was buried from the other side of the government. ICBC, which, by the way, had pages ripped out of the reports made public, Honourable Speaker. So, I, I, you know, they can, they can talk about this all they want. If they want to talk about the importance of what's in the findings, happy to do that. But they're in no position to, to talk about anyone's integrity in this place, Honourable Speaker, because consistently in government, they sure showed the exact opposite. Now, now the members uh, are talking about um, you know, the, the fact that there was some real serious mismanagement when it came to breaking the conflict of interest rules in BC uh, Housing. And, we agree with the members. It's, it's simply not acceptable. And so our goal now is, is multi-pronged. One, there are recommendations in place. Many of them have already been put in, uh, enacted. There are some that we will be um, uh, following up and making sure they get done by s s spring 2024. And, Honourable Speaker, we know that this work is going to be vitally important to be done, not only because we want public accountability of dollars, but we want to ensure that BC Housing can c continue to do the work that they need, must do, which is provide the critically important housing for the most vulnerable people in this province. Member for Abbotsford West. Uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm trying to reconcile what I'm reading in this report, 50-page report, with what uh, we are hearing from the, uh, the Premier today. According to the report, uh, our work has uncovered significant risks to public funds resulting from the manner in which BC Housing operates. Observations call into question BC Housing's financial oversight capabilities and the rigor with which BC Housing disperses public funds. Further on, the mismanagement 
has permeated throughout the organization. The most recently completed financial review was for fiscal year 2020, finalized in August 22. At least 90 million in public funds was advanced to ATIRA between the end of fiscal year 2020, 2020 and the completion of BC Housing's most recent financial review. The financial review for fiscal year 2020 contained inaccurate and misleading components. Now, the, the Premier wants to stand here and portray himself as a hapless victim of the misdeeds of others, uh, Mr. Speaker. But far from addressing this decisively, the Premier did what he could to downplay the seriousness, the magnitude of what we now know to be a serious scandal. He ignored the BDO report, arguably buried it, When he fired the entire NDP-appointed board at BC Housing, he went out of his way, Mr. Speaker, he went out of his way to make the point that there was no suggestion of any wrongdoing, when we know that to be fundamentally untrue, Mr. Speaker. And despite all of those warning signs, despite all of that information, he signed off on tripling the funding, tripling the funding to this very organization. My question to the Premier is this. Does he understand the concept of ministerial responsibility? Does he accept it? Or is it just, is it just a principle that applies to others, Mr. Speaker? And when will he stand up and take responsibility for what happened on this launch? Government House Leader. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. It's, it's tough hearing that question from that member. It's honestly tough. I mean, this, this 50 page report would have been 44 pages if that member had had this report, Honourable Speaker. So, of course, we take this serious, Honourable Speaker. Of course, we take this serious, Honourable Speaker. Of course we take this seriously. That's why when the Premier saw what he saw, when he, saw, when he was shown text messages of potential wrongdoing, that it's he okay, took members. the steps to have a Members, it's... Member... Opposition House Leader. Please continue. Honourable Speaker, in the end of the day, when we see an issue, when the Premier sees an issue, we take action, Honourable Speaker, and that's what's reflected in the work that's happened here. The balance question period.